Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, February 21st. Tesla has signed a deal with Magnus Energy Technologies, an interesting new battery technology company based in Australia. Magnus describes itself as a, quote, vertically integrated lithium-ion battery technology and materials company. Now, along with a graphite mining project in Tanzania they've got, the company is part of Imperium 3's New York consortium of companies working to build a lithium-ion battery cell gigafactory in New York. The company is developing a graphite mine in Tanzania where it plans to get ultra-high purity natural flake graphite from the operation. Now, Tesla is not just buying graphite from Magnus. It also plans to buy processed anode material, or AAM, based on graphite, and the deal involved Magnus building a U.S. facility to produce the material. Now, we're not entirely sure if this is also in line with the existing Gigaplant factory plans. These projects could prove useful to Tesla, as the automaker is looking to secure a large number of battery cells in order to support their goal of 20 million electric vehicles per year by 2030. Tesla is shifting its battery cell production capacity from Germany to the United States. Tesla is currently building its new 4680 format cells at its pilot plant in Fremont, California, but the automaker was planning on deploying large-scale production at Gigafactory Texas and also Berlin. Last year, we heard that Tesla was running into issues with building battery cells in Berlin, so it seems the federal tax incentives for battery production in the U.S. have tipped the scales. The Brandenburg Economy Ministry issued a statement confirming that Tesla is starting to produce battery cell components, but is holding off on full production because it is prioritizing United States production. Now, at the same time, Tesla has recently confirmed that it is making progress towards ramping up production of the 4680 in Texas. The cells are going to be used to increase production of the Model Y and the Cybertruck later this year. The USA EV price war is actually rumbling in a place that I totally forgot about. Dealerships. Tesla sparked a price war by announcing hefty cuts on their models, but many automakers in the USA did not respond by directly reducing their MSRP. A couple of them did. But now, according to Kelly Blue Book, the average transaction price of a new electric vehicle in January was down 5.4%, and there could be some room to go. Taking a look at the details, Volkswagen didn't reduce the MSRP of their ID4. However, dealers across the country are now offering discounts, some of them substantial, to compare with Tesla. Like Volkswagen, Kia has not reduced the MSRP of their EVs in response, but they did improve their lease terms on the EV6 somewhat. The long-awaited Nissan Aria is finally hitting the shelves, however, and some dealers are offering discounts over and above Nissan's $1,240 reservationist private offer that was existing. Poking around a little more, we found that Nissan of Louisville in Texas is taking off $3,428 from MSRP. Even the long-coveted Ford Lightning is starting to see dealers come back to reality, offering vehicles to be purchased at MSRP. We did find a few discounts out there as well. So it seems that the EV price war is actually going on, but maybe it's a little bit of a cold war, or maybe out of the limelight war. <laughs> This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, hosts of the WCX World Congress Experience event. For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. Hyundai has finally revealed prices for the electrified streamlighter sedan, the Ionic 6. It was officially unveiled last July, and the sedan quickly gained the attention of the masses as one of the most aerodynamic and energy-efficient EVs with a coefficient of 0.22. The Hyundai Ioniq 6 will have a starting MSRP of $41,600, with most trim levels available at U.S. dealerships starting this spring. The version scored 240 miles of range, but EPA testing showed that the SE long-range rear-wheel drive version, that one scored 361 miles. 
That vehicle starts at $45,500. Toyota is poised to begin producing EVs in 2025, according to a new report. I've spent far too much time berating Toyota for fighting against electric vehicles, but the incoming CEO seems to be making moves while still playing it safe, at least a little bit. Last week, Koji Sato, the new CEO, announced that the time is right to begin accelerating battery electric vehicle deployment with a new approach. And now, according to a new report from Nikkei Business, the new approach may include Toyota manufacturing electric SUVs in the U.S. as early as 2025. In addition, the report claims that Toyota looks to achieve over 10,000 EV output monthly by the year 2026. It also says that Toyota is striving to reach 1 million in electric vehicle sales globally by the same date. Toyota still has a little wiggle room to get out of this if they so choose. A spokesperson for Toyota said that the details in the report have not been announced by the company, and that no decision has been made on when to begin U.S.-based EV production. At Electric, we welcome Toyota into the fold, but we are cautiously optimistic. Ford signed a Memorandum of Understanding to establish a new joint venture with LG Energy Solutions and Koch Holding to build one of Europe's largest commercial EV battery cell facilities, with up to 45 gigawatt hours in potential annual production capacity. The project is on track to break ground near Ankara, Turkey later this year, and they expect the facility to begin in 2026 with battery production. Ford is now preparing to reach their 2 million annual global EV production rate and extend their position in the EV market, and batteries are definitely going to be vital. You could say that the race for battery hegemony continues. <laughs> Uber, the rideshare company, has a commercial trucking division called Uber Freights, and they're teaming up with California-based Watt EV, an electric truck and charging infrastructure company, and together they're going to launch the company's first zero-emission electric truck pilot. Now, the pilot program will help the company expand its network as it develops routes from the port of Long Beach to Inland Empire and Central Valley, and they have plans to extend to North Carolina and then expand to Arizona, and eventually nationwide. I guess I've been out of the trucking loop since I didn't realize until now that Uber Freight has one of the largest, most extensive logistic networks with over 130,000 carriers and thousands of shippers. Learn something new every day. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Rick Levesque says, Oh, hi, what are you doing here? Isn't this a holiday in your part of the world? Yes, Rick, it was, but I hardly notice. Ever since I left school, I haven't really seen a lot of holidays like President's Day or Columbus Day since I've usually worked either in retail or for small businesses. Maybe if I was a teacher or worked at a bank or the government, I might have more holidays, but it's become normal for me to pass on the luxuries of minor holidays. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.